Here we go. Hatch is open. Welcome back, astronauts. Yeah! Blue Origin is back in the game and back on the pad. They launched six people to space Thursday, August 29th. This is Blue Origin's eighth suborbital space tourism mission. The flight reached a maximum altitude of about 341,000 feet and it touched down in West Texas just about 10 minutes later. Now these flights are short. Liftoff occurred at 8.07 a.m. Texas time, and they landed around 8.19 a.m., so fairly short. They reach a maximum altitude of about 341,000 feet. Now, one thing that I noticed is that they really could use some Starlink because their return home reactions were quite choppy. <laughs> Seeing a lot of smiles, a lot of jubilance here. Oh, that is love. That is emotion. How are you feeling? And this is actually a point of debate for many people. You can hear one of the passengers, Nicolina Elric, yell, I went to space. This has been debated as the vehicle only experiences a few minutes of weightlessness as it goes above the Carmen line. This is the 62 mile high marker that many people regard as the boundary of space. But they only go slightly above the Carmen line and considering it's such a short flight, I guess it's fair to say they went to space, but I think calling them astronauts is a bit of a stretch. Just my opinion. However, we still don't really know how much this whole thing costs. Blue Origin, for some reason, is happy to say you can go on their website and book a ticket, but why are they so secretive about the price? When you Google how much is a new Shepard ticket, the AI overview says as of February 2024, a ticket for a suborbital flight on Blue Origin's New Shepard typically costs between $250,000 and $500,000, but the price has varied over time. Before they went on sale in 2018, reports indicated that a ticket could cost at least $200,000, but in 2021, the first ticket ever sold went for $28 million dollars in an online auction. Oh my gosh. I don't think anything that lasts 10 minutes is worth $28 million. In 2024, Moondow paid about two and a half million for two seats or 1.25 million per seat. And they had their second astronaut ride on this mission. The first one was actually Dude Perfect, uh, one of the members of Dude Perfect, which is a very popular YouTube channel. And the winner of the second ticket through a raffle actually originally was a gentleman from China who they just tried for you know, I think over a year to get him approved and that just didn't happen. So they re-raffled. So they flew Dr. Eamon Jahangir as their second astronaut. Now, I do think that these launches are cool, but let's make no mistake, they're most cool for the astronauts and the friends and family that get to witness the launch. The ride was incredibly smooth and I was so impressed with the ride up. But being there, the darkness of space, you can't, there's no way to talk about it. There's no way to talk about how how impressive space is and the earth below. Oh, yeah. I'll be honest, I was offered an opportunity to cover this, but I was told that I couldn't live stream it and I wouldn't get the final edit and this just didn't seem like it would be worth it to go there. I'm hoping in the future that Blue Origin will be more open with their coverage considering they live streamed it. I don't know why I wouldn't be able to live stream it. The mission elapsed time was 10 minutes and 8 seconds. The max ascent velocity was 2,238 miles per hour. One of the things that actually kind of freaked me out was the audio from inside um, the spacecraft. And it's in landing and... To, as, as a reminder to people, this is so critical to the reusability. It sounded like the crew was um, 
really losing their minds. I'm sure that they were very excited. But uh, this moment where the broadcast just cuts the sound from there because it was very loud and almost a little bit unclear to tell what was happening. And some people have noticed this, and maybe perhaps this is why they wouldn't want me to live stream in person. But you can see the capsule coming back after the 10-minute flight. You don't see the shoots. They're zoomed in so that you cannot see the shoots. And a lot of people are asking me why they chose to zoom in and not show the shoots. Which, by the way, on the final descent of previous launches, we have seen the parachutes. So perhaps it's because there was a deployment issue on the previous flight, but it is quite interesting that we didn't get to see the shoots today. However, then I'm not so sure because it looks like this woman was able to film from quite far away, probably from the road, but she was able to show the shoots saying congrats NS26 crew and Blue Origin on the launch. This mission includes the first Blue Origin astronauts to be included in CamBank, the new astronaut biobank, which Blue Origin reposted this saying, cool shot, glad you could catch the launch today. But as you can see, uh, the shoots in this video have already been deployed and they are at quite a distance. So regardless, I just wanted to do this quick recap video. This is the eighth suborbital flight for them. And it went great. So that's great for the astronauts on board. Um, again, like I say, if, if I were one of those crew members, I would really not want to refer to myself as an astronaut because we all know how much time and training and effort and preparation actually goes into becoming whether it's uh, Jared Isaacman of the world or even Butch or Sonny who are still at the ISS. Um, there's a lot of work involved in actually you know, being able to do work, for example, up at the ISS. So one last question for you guys. Uh, I really can't get a good sense or feel. Is this a uh, type of mission that you guys are really tuned into? Or is this not something that you care about as much as, let's say, the Polaris Dawn mission? I have heard some mixed opinions. I feel like the consensus that I'm getting is that for most people, this just isn't that interesting. In fact, I've asked people um, that I respect if they would ever want to go on one of these flights, and it just doesn't sound like it's that appealing, perhaps because it's so short-lived or perhaps because it's so expensive. <laughs> Did this moment motivate you to push deeper into the cosmos? Hell yes. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, thank you for watching this video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you are having a great day. There's been a lot going on in the space universe and this is just one of the many videos that I have to make. <laughs> If you guys enjoyed this video and all of my Starship coverage, please subscribe to Ellie in Space. It's completely free and that way you won't miss any future videos. If you want to take it a step further, please consider signing up for my Patreon. YouTube revenue can be very unpredictable and hit or miss. And you guys on my Patreon are why I'm able to take these trips and help me experience the life that I'm very thankful to live down here at Starbase and many of the other places that I've gone to report for the channel and the places that I'll be going in the future.